Hi guys and dolls, I hope everybody had a wonderful Yule, wonderful Christmas and I hope you're all looking forward to bringing the new year in, however you choose to do that. I'm shattered today, I've just come back from my sister's house up north where I spent Christmas so I'm basically having a lazy day but I just thought I would get up briefly while my boyfriend goes and does some food shopping so I can get this book review in because I just finished this book yesterday and it's definitely going to be of interest to quite a lot of you here that watch my channel. The book is by Neville Drury, it's called Wisdom Seekers, The Rise of the New Spirituality and I loved it. It's about yay thick. Loved it. Finished it last night. Um, the reason I picked the book up initially was because I think I'm quite interested recently in what new age means to different people and whether or not I would actually choose to place myself and my practices under the new age moniker. And I'm also quite interested in the fact that new age has become quite a disparaging term in some circles. Um, sort of quite a derogatory term I suppose you could say and I understand from the perspective of for example somebody who follows a religion in the Abrahamic triad so Islam or Christianity for example I can completely understand why a group of very holistic practices which favour both eastern and western ideas which are brought together to kind of allow somebody to craft their own pathway towards God in whatever way they choose I can understand why that might be threatening or seem kind of wishy-washy or heretical to um, a Christian or a Muslim, somebody who believes that all of their messages and their lessons about how to live come from one revered prophet who was the son of God. I can understand why anything under that new age umbrella might seem kind of sacrilegious to them. Um, but I do think in a broader context as well, with people that are quite smart and normally quite open-minded, new age has come to mean something a little bit dirty and I don't really know if I like that but I think I need to know more about what exactly comes under the new age umbrella and why we use the term new age. I mean for example I'm a huge fan of Carl Jung and his writings and I think that Carl Jung is considered to be a new age figure but only because he's of interest to new agers who very much fit into that moniker. He was I suppose what you could say a pioneer of the psyche so I'm interested to see how he fits in and I do believe that the new age community have kind of misinterpreted some of his messages and some of the messages of some other pioneers of the psyche from way back when so I suppose that's of interest to me as well. The book is fantastic it goes in chronological order so it begins very much with talking about the pioneers of the psyche so they go into um, psychoanalysis and how it came around and different ideas to do with that and then on to transpersonal therapy and the forerunners for transpersonal therapy which is also of great interest to me and then gestalt therapy and the Esalen Institute and everything that went on there and the great thing about Neville Drury's approach to the book is that he's not only discussing the various different practices and how they came around and what they entail he's very much into giving you an overview um, an idea of each figure each kind of important figure in each school or of thought or practice. So for example with the Esalen Institute he tells quite a few in interesting stories about um, Fritz Perls for example and other leading members of the different groups that were there. He kind of spins the yarn quite a lot and he talks not only about the positive points and not only about how revered they were in their day but also about the low down and dirty facts about them that don't really tend to see the light of day much. So he is quite, um, he's fair in his portraits of these different people who were involved in the institute or involved in one practice or another. I think he wants to give you an idea of them as a human being and not just an idea of their station in the kind of, in the new age um, <clears throat> hierarchy if you like. So that was interesting and then it went on to the psychedelics which is a huge interest of mine and um, figures such as Timothy Leary and stuff like that so it really does go kind of in a chronological order that you can understand, you can see how each stage kind of moved on into the next one and it is kind of quite all encompassing and as, as I said the figures do have quite a large part to play in it. I learned quite a few new practices and came to an understanding about quite a few new schools of thought whilst reading this. Um, like one... I can't remember, I think I've got it noted down here. Yeah, there's something called... There's something that Groff came up with in the mid-70s when LSD became kind of politically untenable. He wanted to find um, different ways of 
experiencing the same sensation. So he came up with this thing called holotropic breath therapy, which I've never heard of, had no idea anybody was doing. I think it has, um, it's kind of a mixture of the isolation, isolation chambers that were invented and a few other things as well to do with using your breathing and the way you breathe to achieve an altered state of consciousness. So I'm quite interested in that kind of thing. So there's quite a lot of stuff that it brought out of the woodwork for me that I didn't know was going on and I didn't know was a thing. So I have a lot of further research to do and the notes section in the book is very, very comprehensive. It has absolutely every single bit of bibliography you would need in there. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's he's really included it all. So he's, dr he's drawn from a lot of different sources. So there's a lot of research for me to go on and do. And that is the kind of book that I like when I'm looking for an all encompassing um, study on something, you know, I want to learn something from the get go to where it is now, then I really like to have a lot of further research to do. Because obviously a book of this length won't cut it. But a, if a book of this length can give me a fantastic overview, then it's done its job. And I would say that Neville Drury has definitely done his job with this book for sure. Um, he also has a chapter on the link up between science and spirituality, it's very difficult relationship um, and that goes into things like behaviourism and reductive thought versus quantum theory if you're interested in that kind of thing. I'm teetering on the brink of becoming very interested in that kind of thing. Um, my boyfriend is worlds ahead of me in that way so there are a lot of questions that I could put to him as a result of reading that chapter that I think would be quite interesting but it's just basically about different ways of seeing the world um, and the two different ways that the two different schools of science, if you like, choose to think about space and time and whether or not these constructs are um, solid and linear and definite or whether or not they are actually from consciousness. So that was interesting. I think you could take it as deep as you wanted to. But again, it's a great springboard. This book is a fantastic springboard. Every single chapter will give you a lot more to go on and research in depth. You know, it's not going to give you the absolute um, 101 stuff on Jung, it's going to give you a few paragraphs and it's going to give you how it ties into New Age thought now and then maybe a little bit on his grappling that he had with Freud, but it is a great springboard. He will give you a lot to go on and do by yourself. Um, and I think, again, the, the bibliography at the back is fantastic for that as well. You can pick up so many more books depending on which chapter interests you. For example, with me, definitely the psychedelic years, there's a lot to think about. And I like the fact that he basically condensed it down into the main figures, the main studies that were done, the Harvard psychedelic studies, for example, and that kind of thing. So that was fantastic for me because it just reminds me, it gives me an overview of what my interest is. And then I can go on from there and I can kind of delve into lots of other little um, nuggets of wisdom that I didn't know before or figures that I wasn't aware of before. So that's the kind of book that I really love to read. Um, some parts of the book are sceptical which I like because I was kind of wondering whether or not his tone was going to be entirely celebratory or whether there were going to be any kind of gripes that he had with various different areas of the new age community. And I noticed that when it came to things like mediums and channeling, there was a little bit of scepticism there. And I don't think that it was necessarily cruel or malicious. And I don't think that it was overt. It certainly didn't um, colour the tone of the book at all. He doesn't have an agenda. That's what I would say. He's definitely very open to um, the whole of the of the um, the landscape of New Age thought. And I don't think that he's trying to come across with a very strong and distinct idea that he wants you to swallow. However, I did notice that when he was talking about channeling and talking about mediums, particularly when it comes to the large amount of money that changes hands um, and people professing psychic ability to know when terrible things are going to happen. And then as a result of that, people that are listening to them and engaging with them getting very frightened. And, you know, he's basically just stating that this kind of thing isn't good, is it? it isn't healthy um and with the mediums i think he was just he just had a concern about the sheer amount of money that changes hands channeling he was kind of off on it um i wouldn't say he was sarcastic but he was asking us to be skeptical about these people who feel that you know they can channel the word of god and things like that so um, anything to do with money changing hands i think also he he had a very very brief couple of paragraphs on crystal healing and he did mention that it's very important to note when you're looking into crystal healing within the new age community that crystals cost a pretty penny so we need to be constantly looking at what we're getting for our money what the investment is overall what we really believe about what crystals can do what they've scientifically been proven to do and i think again that skepticism 
Um, it's not cynical, I don't think it's necessarily meant to pull any punches, I think it's just healthy scepticism, he's asking you to kind of be clear about that kind of thing in your own mind, so yeah, that interested me with the crystal healing thing, that he was a little bit more sceptical, kind of put his celebratory feeling on the back burner a little bit for that. And at the end of the book there is a chapter on death, which I found very interesting, um, and it went into a lot of thanatological ideas that have come up, particularly about uh, near-death experiences and stuff like that, which I found great because it's thanatology is a major, major interest of mine, and any new morsel of an idea that I can get or a thought I can get from a book is always great, and I think the way he tied it in with New Age thought and the way he tied in the way our ideas are potentially going in terms of death and in terms of how we treat the idea of death and, and how we think about what comes afterwards, um, it was very interesting, it was very thought-provoking. Overall, it's a very positive book, and he does say a lot more about the positives than the negatives of New Age thought as a whole. He will give you a very all-encompassing, very pragmatic overview of the entire structure of what New Age means, what it entails, who the major figures are. Um, and there's just this really lovely few pages at the end where he really talks about the positivity and how he feels everything is going to um, come together going forward. Uh, so I think it's overall just a really fantastic book for the bookshelf if you're interested in just having um, a great overview and having lots of different springboards you can jump off onto other stuff. I have no criticism, I thought it was fantastic. Um, but remember, as I said, it's, it's only ever going to be a small piece of information about each separate thing. Um, it's a springboard idea. If you wanted to learn more about Timothy Leary and the psychedelic years, for example, you would go on to pick up some of his books or pick up some other books about the Harvard experiments, whatever. So, you know, it is one of those things you're going to you're going to dip into the book and then from it you're going to have so much more that you want to be able to come out on the other side with a kind of a book list, things to learn, um, how to deepen your understanding and that kind of thing. So I think as a beginner's book, to get that holistic overview of New Age as a concept, I think it's fantastic. I definitely recommend it. Okay, guys, thanks for listening. Bye.